Mm. And um, I want to speak to this idea because this, this whole world view is all just self-awareness and knowing mm, like, you know, what affected me when I was growing up and where I came from. And it's just that beautiful process of self-inquiry that we've been talking about. But how do you know when you're actually in that state of, um, like I would call it intuition, mm -hmm. and really a, like in that flow or the ego, because yeah. the, the mind comes in and tries to shut down this, this journey. No, 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 don't go there, don't go there. Everything's fine up here, everything's great. Mm. Don't go in there because it's scary. So how, how would you like navigate that? And how do you know the difference between what is the voice of the soul? What is the voice of the intuition? And what is the voice of like the mind, the ego? Yeah. Um, so the ego mind, I, I use those words interchangeably, but we don't need to get into that today. So the ego, I'll stay with ego. So the ego is based purely in duality. And what I mean by that is it's either right, wrong, good, bad, future, past get to know that really understand that because this will help you to start identifying when you're operating from the five percent and not your true nature because if you are in any judgment even judging yourself <laughs> is even judging your judgment you're still trapped up there and you're only living five percent of your true capacity in nature so if you're in the future or in the past you're not here all the gurus they be here now it's not just be here now and who cares about the rest. That's sociopathic, <laughs> you know, it's psychotic. No, it's be here now. Don't be projecting forwards and don't base your future on the past. That's all the mind, ego. Your true nature, your soul, when you really start to live at that level, completely transcends judgment. It goes to the place where you are discerning. So you're not like a boy in the ocean going, I'll just go where the flow takes me again. That's psychotic. That's not it. There's a lot of people that use these concepts to bypass their problems and just live a high, happy life. Sometimes we need to do that for a little bit. It's okay, but not as a way of, you know, doing your life. So the soul is that place where you don't know how you know, you just know. No story, no justification, no fear. Or if the fear is there, you're like, no, that fear is judgment. That is my ego. That is not my true nature. I see you. Is that fear warning me of something to be mindful of? Great, I'll be mindful, but I'm not going to let this bypass that place. So again, this is courage, spiritual courage, not toughness, courage. Courage, real courage to say, I don't know how I know, honey, but we just need to turn left. And the more you practice that, it becomes very true. It is a muscle. You really do need to flex this. It doesn't just turn on. It's a consistent practice. So it's not that when you're living at soul, say a group of women are there or a group of people and you're feeling like, you know, normally you'd be like, well, I'm not going to talk to her. You, okay, let's bring it back. Say you're in a group situation and there's someone you just feel yuck about. You don't know why. And you're like, the mind, will, the ego will go into, well, it's because she's da 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 And it will critique to feel safe, to justify that feeling. And it will create a lot of drama. Whereas the soul will go, I don't know why, I just don't feel comfortable. I just don't feel comfortable, so I, I'm not going to make a story. I'm not going to judge this person I don't know. I'm just going to go over this way. It's discernment. Judgment is a reflection of the mind, the ego, the 5%. Discernment is an expression of your true nature. Sometimes it's not appropriate to be in situations that don't feel good and you don't need a reason why. If you're really coming down to that deeper nature, it will serve you so well. And it will be connected to bigger things that you can't even imagine. Like it's connected to greater cycles that have got your best interests for your own evolution in mind every time, two million percent. 
But discernment and judgment really see the difference, guys. Like discernment is a great way to live. Judgment, no. Drama, pain, suffering, separation. It's a weak way to do life, I can guarantee it. Discernment, how one of my teachers shared with me, Paula, work with the word appropriate. What is appropriate right now? Not what is right or wrong, what is appropriate? And the more you go down, the more you'll access a level of appropriateness that's appropriate for me and the woman that I feel triggered by. It's taking care of both of us at that level. When you know, when you're living away from the mind and the ego and judgment, say, I'm going to use this example, if somebody walked in this room now with a gun, they've just killed 20 people outside and they're threatening to kill all of us. And we are, let's imagine that we're very extreme believers in a religion like Christianity, thou shalt not kill. And we are just staunchly into that belief system. I'm not putting down Christianity here, I'm just using it as an example of extreme judgment. I will not kill anybody. He comes in and he kills everybody here, including you and me, your baby. All of the people that are affected by that, that's thousands of souls. And we, because we were all like, no, we will not, we will not. We judged in that moment what was right or wrong. We couldn't respond to the situation from an appropriate space in our souls. So let's go with, uh, let's assume there is such a thing as karma. Assume for just the sake of this conversation that if he's come in and we had a moment where we could take him out, even if it meant that we had to kill him, what if we saved him from killing all of us, all of the people he harmed, and maybe his own soul. What if we did that? I don't know what I truly believe. I have my ideas, but I personally would like to think that I would be able to respond appropriately to any situation from my deeper self and not react. Not react when my mother tells me I look ugly. Not react to respond. There'll be a reaction, but the more you do this work, the more you'll see the reaction, you'll let it be there. You won't judge yourself. As soon as you go into judgment, you're back in there. Any judgment, you judge your own judgment, even. <laughs> you're looping back in. The mind's very tricky and clever at surviving. So, yeah, it's a bit of an extreme example, but it helps to really point out where judgment can take you out from an appropriate response in every moment. There is an appropriate response response that will not only serve you and save you but everyone around you even if you had to do something that the mind said that's wrong the ego the conditioning the family whoever is there that's wrong that will create i promise more suffering if you react from the mind and not respond from an appropriate level in your soul